Hello, hello, lovely fellows. Uh, this is Carl.Tech, and I'm going to be presenting Plasma MVP. So I was writing a blog post, and I realized it would be so nice if everyone already understood how Plasma MVP works. And so here's, your, here's, here's our chance to, to find out. I don't speak Thai. Google is just horrible with languages. Anyway, um, Plasma chain for scalable payments. So, um, what is what is Plasma? What does it do? Well, it provides scalability um, for for uh, just simple transfers. This is the MVP. So, Plasma is really a, a construction uh, that uh, can be used for a number of different things, and not just simple transactions per second. But but for now, it's it's a. Uh, uh, just simple payments and you know a thousand transactions per second pretty great um, what does it do well it allow it, it the normal guarantees of any token transfer system um, it, you know tokens cannot be double spent they cannot be withheld they cannot they can be and they can be redeemed on the root chain so this is the key property of, of a plasma chain uh, so what actually allows these tokens to be redeemed it is the exit mechanism and what that basically means is you have your tokens on the plasma chain and they they're able to uh, uh, be transferred many transactions per second on the plasma chain but if that plasma chain ever gets messed up breaks down whatever it is uh, goes rogue then you're able to get your tokens out. So this is how it, it maintains the decentralization, the security, uh, while still uh, giving you uh, like massive transactions per second. And that's that's really this this key. Um, and it works for many different uh, constructions. Cur currently, there's uh, research going on uh, for adding, basically building plasma chains for. ERC-721, general state transitions, etc. And you can check out the Plasma Implementers call, which is super fun. Um, and we, we talk about a lot of these and, and explore all the people implementing it. So let's get, get down to business. Um, so the, the general idea is we have these we have three three main main uh, participants we've got these uh, ethereum miners that's that's on the on the left side we've got the plasma operator right in the middle and we've got this the plasma operator is maintaining the plasma chain so these are you know blocks on the plasma chain these are blocks on the main ethereum chain and our our so yep, plasma contract is deployed on the mainnet. So really, this this plasma thing is a contract that is deployed on the mainnet ethereum network um and the there is a single plasma operator in this first mvp it is a proof of authority chain um and so so this the interesting thing is that even though it's a proof of authority chain we still provide uh these guarantees on token transfers uh this these security properties and that's the that's the key part so it's still decentralized in reality even though there is this um, you know, seemingly central actor. Um, but it is a constrained central actor, so that's a, that's a key property. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the f five uh, kind of cases, normal cases, for the Ethereum plasma chain. Um, and that is the operator just creating a node block. We have a, a user, Sam, depositing some ETH. Um, sending some transactions, and then Sam, these are two at attacks. So Sam attempts to exit with, with five peeth, so essentially tries to seal someone's money. And the operator, another, another attack, the operator creates an invalid block, so the operator can also steal people's money. And these are two cases that we want to prevent. Um, and so let's, let's get started. First, the operator creating a block. So the, the plasma chain operator creates a plasma block you can see right here. It's light gray, which means it has not yet been confirmed, um, and this is this this basically means that this is just created on the plasma operator's kind of database, and any any client can query that uh, REST API and get the plasma chain, but it is not actually confirmed on the main network. So to actually confirm it, the operator sends a transaction to the miner which includes the block hash. So now it is created a block on the main chain and it is confirmed grayed out. Lovely. So Sam comes in with Sam's 10 ETH. So what we're going to do is Sam is going to deposit that ETH and get the, the corresponding uh, uh, amount of ETH on the plasma chain. 
and the uh, that allows Sam to to transact on this plasma chain and get tons of transactions per second. So, deposits five ETH into the plasma contract. The miner gets that transaction and mines a new block with that transaction included. Now notice this I this immediately creates a block on the plasma chain that is confirmed. So th that, that is essentially that we are uh, immediately recognizing the fact that Sam has five peeth on the plasma chain and that's enforced in the smart contract. Remember the smart contract is the, the real history of, of uh, plasma chain blocks. It's just a bunch of hashes, and, and each block actually um, is, is there's both a, a um, uh, there's a transaction route and a UTXO route, but that is uh, we won't get into so, so much detail today. So now the now Sam will start watching the chain for misbehavior, um, and this goes for the Ethereum chain and the Plasma chain, and Alice comes along. And now we can get, get to our next thing where Al uh, Sam sends a bunch of transactions to Alice. So Sam sends 2,500 <laughs> transactions of Peeth because Sam can, because it's a plasma chain. It's super duper scalable, TM. Um, and <laughs> this creates a block on the plasma chain with all of these transactions. Now notice this block has not yet been confirmed, um, but it means that uh, uh, Alice cannot yet spend her uh, her new peeth, so this is not yet enough to to uh, s like fully send a transaction. The block is now submitted uh, to the root chain, and the root chain mines a block. And so now Sam will acknowledge the fact that uh, this that Sam has seen the block be mined on the main chain with no kind of monkey business. There's no in invalidity. And so Sam will then send a confirmation message to Alice. And at this moment, Alice will get her 2.5 ETH and Sam will lose, you know, 2.5 ETH. A key thing to note here is that this is actually something, an active area of research. This is part of the this, this two-phase send is part of the current minimum viable plasma spec, but as you'll notice in the call, there are already proposals and and uh, you know ways to implement this without doing the two phases. But this is just a simple demonstration for for today's video. The key thing about plasma is it's not a single top down. This is the specification. This is essentially a set of design principles that you can use to build your own uh, uh, massively scalable Ethereum application. And so this is what, what is key. So when, you're, when, when, I, when I talk about this stuff, think critically about uh, uh, ways you could improve it. And then, you know, post, on ETH, uh, you know, post about it and, and we'll, we'll have a discussion. So uh, Sam will attempt to withdraw all the... All all her peeths. So essentially, Sam, you'll, you'll notice, only has 2.5. However, Sam is going to send an exit transaction claiming that Sam has five. And so, so Sam will reference an old transaction as, uh, you know, the, her deposit. And this deposit will say, you know, legitimately five peeth. But we know that Sam has since then transferred a bunch of ETH to, or PETH to Alice. So this exit includes a security deposit and the security deposit is released after the challenge period so this essentially means that there is a reward for fight for for raising a red flag saying oh actually sam is stealing someone's money and this incentivizes all users to uh send a challenge transaction and this is what what you know, secures the network against these kinds of attacks. So Alice's client will notice the bad behavior, but you'll also you'll also notice it's good to note that any any node can notice this bad behavior. It doesn't have to be Alice um, that is watching the chain th to notice. Um, and so Alice is going to send a challenge transaction before the challenge period is over. You know, approximately a week, for instance. And this challenge includes a Merkle proof of the transaction uh, spending Sam's coins. So Sam basically sent a transaction. It was included in one of these blocks. And what Alice is going to do is send a Merkle proof, which, which proves that in a previous uh, block after the deposit transaction, Sam has actually spent the money that she was trying to withdraw. So gets the, the nice, nice uh, challenge in the block. And 
pays the challenger, the security deposit, because remember the, the main Ethereum chain has all the like complete information. It knows that Alice is not lying. It knows that this is, uh, that Sam had to have um, been lying. Um, and this is, this is because of the ordering of blocks and the Merkle, Merkle route. And it's cancel Sam's exit. So attack failed, go plasma. <laughs> so now for our second attack. Um, an operator is going to create an invalid block, or it technically could also be withholding a block. And Sam and Alice are going to exit before the, the uh, operator steals the ETH. So we're going to see how, how this attack is mitigated. Um, so first things first, uh, the operator is going to create an invalid block. Um, notice that Sam and Alice have been so far noticing all of these blocks are, are, are totally fine and you know not detecting any bad behavior. However, this one includes a transaction which prints you know a bunch of money for instance um, and or steals some some money from someone what's going to happen here is the plasma operator is going to submit that block to the main chain okay now notice that the way that Sam and Alice are, are, are currently getting downloading these these blocks, Sam and Alice has have to ver be verifying. These clients have to be verifying each block. And the way that that actually happens is they just send queries to the Plasma operator, and it's just a REST API. And and this is this is actually why minimum viable Plasma is so fun because it's it's really Im easy to implement. It's just like simple REST API. Anyway, um, so the a block gets mined, and an invalid block is confirmed. Bad news, very bad news for everyone. So what happens? Well, those clients that were, that were checking block validity notice the bad behavior. And what are they going to do? They're going to send exit transactions. Okay, so they're going to take their, you know, they're gonna try to get their money off of the plasma chain and back onto the root chain. The miner receives it, and then, uh-oh, the plasma operator is also going to submit an exit. This is not this is not looking good for for Alice and Sam because if the uh, plasma operator were to exit and n the Sam and Alice not ab were not able to exit, then the plasma operator could just exit with all of their money, for instance. So uh, this is the cool thing about minimum viable plasma. So there is no checking ch state transitions in minimum viable plasma. Instead, it is checking transaction ordering. So we'll see what that means exits are based on older transactions being processed first. So what we do is we line these up. We say, okay, here's block number one, and this is in the plasma contract. Remember, all of these, all of these transactions are recorded in the plasma contract. So we're going to first check block number one. Okay, and block number one was whose transactions were included. Was you know Sam, Alice, plasma operator, any of those transactions? No. So we, we continue to block number two. Notice just the red. These correspond to 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 the the blocks. Um, block number two still no. Now block number three, there is a uh, or block number four. Sorry, um, this is the block when. Sam sent the trans the sent the 2.5 ETH, and so the plasma operator. This is the last transaction that was that was known um, that Sam has sent, and so the plasma contract is going to send Sam back 2.5 ETH. So the plasma contract before you'll notice had six ETH, and then after processing this block, sends 2.5 ETH to Sam, and sends 3.5 ETH to Alice. So this is there. It's processed in order because those were the that on the fourth block. That's when Sam sent the money to Alice. You'll notice now that the plasma contract has zero ETH, and this is zero ETH on the main chain. So by the time the plasma operator's block is processed, lol, plasma operator is pwned. There is no ETH to send. Hallelujah. We attack failed. Go plasma. So this is this was a a uh, uh, quick overview of of plasma um, MVP and focuses on you, the, some things that you'll note are there's a central uh, operator but that central operator is constrained and unable to steal any money because all of these uh, you know cool mechanisms so thank you everyone hopefully that was helpful. Um, 
Have a lovely day. Now for something completely different.